Hey, so how are we doing? So today we're going to take a look at creating a MicroBlaze V, which is using the uh, new MicroBlaze Risk Five uh, application, and we're going to do that using uh, using Vivaldo. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a project here. We're going to give this project a name, so we'll call this MBV microsite chronicles 549 which is the number of the chronicles that we've written today we're going to have an rtl project we're not going to specify any sources at this time and then we're going to go and find the boards from here i'm going to look for the rt uh, and i'm going to use the rts 750 because uh, as you can see from the background behind me i'm in a hotel room right now and this is one of the boards that i brought with me uh, with that we're going to finish the uh, project and let the, let the project open uh, once the project's open, we're going to get started uh, on working with this. So we're going to create the block diagram here. Uh, we'll call this one uh, MB Risk V. Once we've got this block diagram open, what we're going to do is we're going to leverage some of the capabilities that we get uh, with the Vivado's board awareness. So we're going to click on the boards tab here. We're going to click on the DDR3 SD RAM. We're going to pull this over to the uh, block diagram. It right, take a few seconds uh, to do this, but once we've got this on, it will not be uh, too bad at all. So this is going to add this new memory interface generator. So this is uh, where we can run um, data, where we can store data, run our applications from. Uh, it's quite useful to have. Uh, actually, we don't want these reference clock and the system clock, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna delete that. Uh, and then what we can also do is we're gonna double click on this and recustomize it, uh, just to add in a couple of things that we want to do. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure uh, that we're using uh, the DDR, uh, the XADC instantiation is instantiated within. The DDR memory interface controller uh, and I also want to make sure that the input clocks actually um, are both the same frequency so I'm going to set these to 200 just so that there so that's 200 I'm going to click on next we're going to make this one to be from uh, no buffer also uh, and we're going to enable the instantiation of the XADC we're going to click on next for that once we've got there, we're going to click on next, next, validate, okay for that one, next for that one. Uh, we're going to leave all those okay, we're just going to keep clicking through to the next, the next, and then we're going to get to the generate point. Uh, and this will take a few seconds just to update the, update the uh, files and the configuration of the um, DDR. Once we've got that, uh, we're going to grab this USB UART here as well, so as we can talk to the external world, we're going to drag that drag that onto our block and then we're going to add in the microblaze uh, 5 the microblaze v so we're going to select the microblaze v and double click on it once we've double clicked on that uh, we're going to run the block automation just like we do in a normal uh, microblaze application we're going to select the microcontroller we're going to have 32 kilobytes of local memory not too worried about local memory ecc at this point in time we're going to make sure that the debug is enabled, the AXI peripheral is enabled, the interrupt control, and I'm actually going to run this from the 81 megahertz clock uh, that's provided on there. And we're going to click OK, and this will take a few seconds. Uh, and you'll see this one of the nice things about IP Integrator, it does, does a lot of the heavy lifting for us, so it's going to run through and it's going to create us and configure the microblaze V as we want it to be. Uh, it's going to put in the debug networks, it's going to put in the AXI networks and, and everything uh, that we uh, that we so desire so far. Uh, so, like I say, it'll take a few seconds while we uh, while we run through and do that. Once we've got this done, as you can as you can see now, we've got the local memories instantiated. We've got the Microblaze V debug module. We've got the MIG. We've got the reset system all connected in there. We've got the AXI network. We've got the interrupt controller and the concatenate block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reconfigure this concatenate block at the moment just to have one input. And then I'm going to connect that to the interrupt of the um, AXI UART. We'll, re we'll redraw that just to make it a little bit 
uh, a little bit simpler. Uh, the next thing we want to do, obviously, is we need to uh, we, well, uh, we need to run through and run through the connection automation. So here we're going to connect the uh, AXI networks up a little bit and just run that through, and that's going to connect us through uh, to the data um, the data peripheral network that's connected uh, connected through here also. What we uh, what we need to do, we need to reconfigure. We want to reconfigure this also. And make sure that we can get the um, we can get the uh, instruction uh, passed through as well, the data instruction. So we're going to skip through these uh, levels here, uh, options here, and on page five here, we're going to enable the uh, AXI instruction interface. So I'm going to click on OK there, uh, and then we're going to run the connection automation again, uh, and we're going to click on. Um, on that, and we're going to say that the slave interface here is the uh, MIG, and then we can see there that we've got all of the nice, uh, nice AXI paths that we want uh, that we want for our system. What we don't have so far, obviously, is we don't have a clock going into it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to add the clocking wizard. Uh, we're going to take the clock output here. We're going to take this to the reference clock and to the system clock. We're going to take the locked output here and put that in as the system reset. We're going to double click on this here. And then we're going to make sure that that is set for 200 megahertz. We're going to make sure that this is set actually for 12 megahertz because this is the clock frequency that we're going to use. Uh, and on the output clocks, we're going to turn off the reset and we're going to click on OK to that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to uh, make this connection external. So that's external there. Uh, and then we can obviously uh, map that through to the pins as we go through into the um, XDC format and run through with. Okay, so what we need to do obviously is we need to get the XDC format up and running. So we're going to come here to the constraints. We're going to click here. We're going to click add a new button, add or create constraints, create file. I'm going to call this IO because uh, that's what I like to call my IO allocation pins. And once we've got that, we're going to double click on it. And we're going to put in our constraints. Uh, we're going to put this on pin 14, uh, and it should be, hopefully, that should have got the same name as the clock just down here, which it do, which it does. Uh, so once we've got this, we can see this. We can let's just quickly pop this out, and so everybody can take a so you can take a good look at it. Uh, so we've got the microblaze um, risk five here. We've got the instruction and data local memory bus here. We've got the AXI UART and the MIG connected. We've got the clocking wizard, which is providing the clocking for the um, for the MIG. The MIG output, it's, uh, it's UI clock. We we'll just click on that one there. It's UI clock is driving the rest of the rest of the network. The reset is driving um, the external reset. And obviously the locked is driving the, uh, the, DC, the DCM locked there. Uh, so it's all a nice, uh, a nice system. Uh, what we can do is we can validate this design. We should see that. Come back, there are no, no, no errors, no warnings in this design, which is exactly uh, what we want to see. So on there, we can click OK. Uh, we can click down, and then we can start to implement implement our um, our design. Once that design is implemented and ready, then we can. Uh, export the XADC, uh, XADC. We can export the XDC file, uh, and having taken that XDC file out into um, the, uh, the the file directory that we want it to be into, we can then start working with Vitus. So let's take a look at Vitus. Okay, once we get into Vitus, it's relatively simple. What we want to do, uh, we want to uh, first off, we want to create a um, Want to create a new workspace, so we're going to open a new workspace, uh, and we can do that wherever we wherever we want. 
Uh, so we're going to come back here and we're going to find our project that we had, uh, which was this one. Uh, and we can create a workspace in it. Once we've got that workspace selected, we'll see the Vitus IDE will open up and configure everything in there. That workspace is where we're going to keep everything. We're going to keep the platforms, we're going to keep the applications and everything like that. And this is the next step on it is to create the platform component. Uh, so we can call this uh, risk. Let's actually call this microblaze. Micro blaze v. Uh, we're going to select a existing hardware. Now I've not I I I built the built the hardware uh, that we were uh, working on earlier on. Uh, so we're going to pull this from this XSE. Uh, which is identical to the hardware that we did uh, did previously. Uh, we're going to leave this as a standalone and the microblaze is no other options. We're going to click next and we're going to click finish. And then in a few minutes, we'll see that we have a microblaze platform here. What we're going to do then is we're going to click on the welcome one here. We're going to click on examples. We're just going to find the simple hello world example. We'll notice when we scroll down in the supported processes, we'll see that it can do the microblaze risk, uh, risk V. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create that application there. Uh, so we'll just click next on that. We're going to run this on our microblaze um, platform that we've just created. And we're going to click on next and finish. And this should all run through uh, and give us a application and a platform. Should be very familiar with this. I'm not going to take a lot of time and spend a lot of time uh, talking about this. What we're going to do though is we are going to build uh, the application. Uh, this should also build the um, also build the platform. We'll see down here we get the final uh, the final size. Uh, and then the final thing I'm going to do is we're going to pull this across onto our RT board here, uh, and we're going to debug onto. Uh, this that will we'll see this as it runs and it downloads the application uh, and it will hopefully start running we'll see that runs down we can see it's now paused on the heart on the breakpoint on the on the risk on the risk v processor which is inside the uh, 750 if we open up the terminal window, this is one that I had earlier, but if we clear that and clear the clear the buffer, uh, what we will see uh, as we single step over these is the application uh, working as we uh, as we would expect. So you can see hello world coming up there and we can see also the successfully around the application. So there you go in less than uh, 15 minutes. Um, not including the time to, to build it, because obviously that varies depending upon your uh, process capability. Uh, but in less than 15 minutes, you can get a uh, Microblaze uh, V up and running for your, for your system. So nice and nice and simple and good to go.